Good afternoon, everybody. Tammy from Homesteading in the City with Tammy. Today's video we are, is going to be a knitting video. I'm going to show you how to knit the new All the Rage bucket hat that everybody is wearing nowadays. Um, if that is something that interests you, stick around. So before we get into our knitting, I just wanted to take a few moments to thank everybody for stopping by and watching my videos. Um, I do have a few new subscribers, so I really appreciate you stopping by and subscribing to my channel. For those of you who have been here from the beginning, I really appreciate you coming back each week and watching the new videos that I put out. And if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so because it does benefit me by you subscribing to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be, like I said, a knitting video. I'm going to show you how to read a pattern and also a little trick on how to figure out how much yarn you need when you do a long tail cast on for a large number of stitches. So let's get started. So first off, this is the hat that we are going to be making and I will leave a link for the uh, pattern in the description for you so you guys are able to print that out. Okay, so now when you go to a pattern, there's many different things that you have to look at. First, you need to see what they're doing. You know, of course, it'll give you your materials of what you need. And this, you need at least 200 yards of 100% cotton material. And then it says you need a circular needle, US 4 or 3.5 millimeter, at least a 31 and a half inch length. We are doing this in the round, so you do not want longer than a 31 inch length, a 24 or maybe a 16 might be better. Um, you might not have to change to double pointed needles at the very end if you have a smaller circular needle. Um, but we are casting on over 100 or a, it, depending on the size, 150 to 160 stitches. So that depends on what size um, circular needle that you will get. So um, keep that in mind, and also I would suggest having some double-pointed needles around just in case um, if you only have a large circular needle and you, you, know, you need to put it down onto uh, double-pointed needles. They also they have two different sizes in your double-pointed needles. They have long ones, which are um, usually 8 inches long, I believe those are 8 inches, and then they have your little shorties, which are like 4 inches long. Um, I have both sets and I will probably be going down to both sets because my circular needle that I have is um, a 32 inch length circular needle. Um, that's the one that I ended up having and it's a little long for the project. I will end up showing you in here how to use the circular needle as magic loop so that you can use your circular needle if you even have a longer one for your project without having to buy a new set of needles to just do this project. We, I can show you how to do it with um, using magic loop. So that is part of also that I will show you how to do. Um, also with a pattern, it tell, tells you usually in your pattern your sizes and it'll tell you like it says here small medium then in parentheses is your large extra large so now when you go down to find out the circumference of the head this circumference will fit a small to a medium size head this is going to be your larger extra large head and remember that cotton yarn does stretch when you start using it so you don't want to you know if you have a 20 inch head you're not going to want to go to a 22. You're going to want to keep it right here. Even if you have a 21 inch head, you're probably going to want to do a 19.7 because it's going to stretch and then it's going to be too big. When they wash them, it will shrink, but it will stretch back out. It's 100% cotton yarn. It is like using t-shirt material. It, you know how your t-shirts stretch when you put them on and then shrink back when you wash them. I would suggest if you wash it, not to dry it, you know, air dry it and, uh, go from there but also in your pattern it does tell you abbreviations of what they are using in the pattern so a co means cast on a k in it means knit a p means purl and the usually they only give you the stitches that you are using in the pattern so this stitch tells you p2 together which is purl two stitches together and then sts means stitches 
Um, yeah, so the other thing is when you read a pattern, the best thing to do is once you've figured out your size, so here this would be a small medium, and then this is your extra or large and extra large. Whatever size you need, you go through and you highlight the number that you need. So if you are doing a small medium, you're going to need 150. So you would do, you'd highlight the 150. And then you'd also highlight 13 and 12. You're going to be highlighting the first number of all of these all the way down. So you know what you are sticking with. This way, when you are reading the pattern, your eyes will go to the highlighted number so that you know what you need to do. So that is um, one of my tricks for reading a pattern that has multiple sizes. You highlight the size that you need, and it just allows your eyes to be drawn to that size so that you are constantly... Um, making sure that you have the correct size. And also sometimes there's numbers on the other side, so you wanna highlight everything so you know where you're at and what you're getting to. This just helps you figure out how you're doing your stuff. Also with a pattern, these, ast these asterisks here, when you have asterisks and then stuff in between, that means you repeat that to the end of the round. So these asterisks is, is telling you to repeat this. So you're going to keep doing this stitch until you are all the way to the beginning of your round or to the end of the round. That way you know what you're doing. Okay, so that is my trick for when you are reading a pattern to make sure that you highlight and also for your asterisks to be able to know that this is what you do you, these are this these asterisks means repeat in a pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do a long tail cast on. Now this cast on requires for a small requires 150 stitches to be cast on. Now the best way that I figured out how to do that is to take 12 inches of your yarn. So you would take your yarn and you would measure off 12 inches. Don't cut it, just measure off 12 inches. And then take a straight needle, the same size that you have to cast on. So if you, uh, and it doesn't matter, it can be a, just one of these little um, double pointed needles or it can be a longer needle of the same size that you're casting on. Cast on as many stitches as you can in that 12 inches. You know, want to cast on until you're comfortable with what size tail that you can leave. Um, I was able to cast on 19 stitches. So the number of stitches that you cast on your, after you take your 12 inches, cast on the number of stitches. Once you have those cast on, take that number of stitches that you cast on and divide it by the number of stitches that you need. That will tell you how many increments of 12 inches you need. So I was able to do 19. With my 19 stitches that I could cast on, divided by the 150 gives me almost eight stitches. So if I take that, it's 7.89 stitches, I think it is. It, you want to take that number and times it by 12 inches. That will tell you how many inches of a tail that you need. So for me, I needed 94.7 inches of a tail. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind, if you have a one inch tail, that's not gonna be too bad of a deal. You have seven inches left over. If you have a three inch tail, you gotta remember a three inch tail is gonna be added on to every 12 inches that you do. So you could end up having a really long tail. You want to make sure that you know how many, how long of a tail that you have. And if you have a really long tail, take some of your stitches off. So like for me, I had an inch tail 
that's going to be almost eight inches. That's a little long. I don't need eight inches. So I can go, instead of doing 94.7, I can go to 94. And I'll have plenty of inches left for when I cast on. You don't want to short yourself because you don't want to be at the end and not have a tail. But you also don't want to be at the end and have a really long tail and have to turn around and buy another skein of yarn because... You only need 12 inches and you've got 18 hanging from your cast on. So that's why I've, I've, I tried to figure this out is, you know, to make it so that I wasn't wasting a ton of yarn when I did my cast on. And this, I tried it multiple times and this really worked well for me to get me to only have like a four or five inch tail when I cast on, which was, which I really really enjoyed. So that was something that was a little trick that I found and I was able to uh, figure that out. So now all you're going to do is you're going to start casting on for your pattern. So figure out how many inches, you know, cast on and do your stitches. Find out how many inches you need for your long tail cast on and go ahead and cast on. Um, I've cast on slow motion in another video I will put the slow motion cast on below and then I once you get everything cast on I will show you how to start knitting in the round once you figure out the number of inches that you need for casting on your um, stitches for the tail go ahead and start casting on um, I had showed you that in a previous video on how to cast on. Uh, the best way I've done is cast on until you get 50, put a stitch marker, do another 50, put a stitch marker, so that when you lose count, you don't have to recount everything. You can cast on and um, add in your stitch markers. So that's, um, once you get 50, put a stitch marker there and then keep adding on your other 50. And do cast on your stitches and we will come back. Once you have 50 stitches, just place the stitch marker and then start counting again to do your other stitches. Um, and you can just slide them down. And once you get another 50 done, you can go ahead and add another stitch marker. But you just slide it in like that so that it's on the, the needle. And that way you know where you're at. So if you lose count, you know you have 50 here and then the next one is 50. Okay, so now that you have all your stitches on your circular needle, um, always remember when you're working in a circular needle, your yarn is always going to be on coming off of the right needle. So here is the yarn that we have. We are going to be taking stitches. The yarn's going to be coming off here, and we're going to be moving all of these stitches from here onto this needle. So we're going to have our yarn on the right side, and we are going to be knitting these ones off this needle and around. So now we have to connect this so that when we're working, we have a circle, and then we can just keep... Um, knitting right around so the first thing you want to do before you start before you uh, attach this together you want to make sure that you have no twists in your yarn at all um, after you cast on so make sure that all the bumps are on the inside and there's no twists all the way around also we need to put a stitch marker here at where we're putting these together so if you've used one color to mark your 10 or your 50, we can remove those, but we'll put a different color. So I've, um, I'm going to put um, purple since I've used yellow previous. So I'm going to put a purple stitch there. Now what I do when I cast or when I connect my circle is I actually take my tail and I knit my tail in with the first couple of stitches well at least the first stitch and that way when I come around and do the next round that I'm doing I actually can tighten that stitch up and that allows me to not have a gap right here where I'm doing this so now in order to do 
Um, this garter stitch that they show us in our hat, once we connect this together, we're no longer laying it in the flat. So we have to actually knit a row, purl a row. Well, when you cast on, that's basically your knit row. So our first row that we're going to do is going to be a purl. So you slip in as to purl from right to left. You're going to take both of your pieces of yarn. They'll be in the center of your circle. Wrap them around and bring them out. Now you have, now just remember when you get to this on the round back that there's two stitches there that you can knit together and then you'll be down to one. So now make sure that you have your tail out of the way and that you're only working with your yarn connected to your project. And you are going to purl all the way around this until you get back to your stitch marker. And the first rows are a little tricky on circular needles until you get a little bit ahead of the game here. But they will be fine. It's a getting used to adjusting the stitches. Once they're connected, it is connected. It's a little easier to rotate your stitches around because they will move around for you. I'm going to pull this out so that it's coming from the floor here. That way I don't get my the wrong yarn. And a lot of people will take this tail and they will knot it up so that it's it's not something that you go to grab because if you forget and you grab that tail you could end up um knitting with that tail and then you have to go back and unknit all of your stuff um so however you can so that you know not to knit with your tail but like i said the yarn is coming from the right and you're taking the needle the stitches off the left needle and moving them on to the right needle once you get a few done, you can adjust your stitches around and then they just keep going around. Once we get to our stitch markers here for the 50, we can take those out. We don't need those. That way we know where we are at when we um, add, when we have to change what we're doing. But you can just knit around and then um, our pattern tells us to do this four times and then we are going to decrease on that fifth round. So we're going to go ahead and knit or purl this row, knit the next row, purl the row after that, and then that is our fourth round that we've done. Then the row after that would be our fifth. Then we can go ahead and we are going to do our start our decrease. So then I will show you once you have that. I'll actually I'll come back and I'll show you what I mean by changing our stitches. So go ahead and finish this row in pearls, and then I will show you what it looks like when we get done ready to switch into our next um, stitch. Now you just have to be careful on these first couple of rows when you are um, stitching them that you. Do not twist your um, your knitting, making sure that all of your um, little knit stitches are on the inside. You want to make sure that you know you take the time to do that. It's a little bit difficult at first when you're starting to do this to to slip this around, and it might actually even be better. I mean, they call for at least a 31 inch needle for this. And it actually, you might even be able to go down to a 29 or even a little bit less of a needle, maybe a, a 24 inch circular needle so that you have a little bit of gap in between. This is a little long and I can make it work because I've worked with um, circular needles in the past. Um, but some people that have a hard time 
or this is new to them with a circular needle might really have a hard time getting these stitches to slide um, it does take a little bit of time to get them to slide and they stretch a little bit uh, so that's just I mean but just making sure that you're always keeping your um, stitches correct once you have a couple of rows it's easy enough to know if you've flipped um, your stitches because it'll definitely show right now it's still too new there's not enough stitches on there and you might not catch it until you're way far away from it that you actually uh, flipped it so you just have to keep that in mind make sure you're watching how you're doing your stitches and also remembering to move, remove your stitch marker when you get to the ones that we're just marking out for your 50 so that um, you only have one stitch marker remaining. That way you know when you are at the beginning and the end of your round. And that will allow you to remember which one you have to change your stitches at. It will show and once you get going you'll see where you have to do it. But a stitch marker, until you know how to read your stitches well enough, um, I would suggest using a stitch marker. It just makes it easier. You know, you know that it's coming up, and you can just slip your stitch marker and then start with the next uh, pattern that you need to do, whether it is a knit row or a purl row. So making sure that you get your stitch markers off so that there's only the one, and then... Um, once we get to the end of the row here, I'll show you what I'm how we are going to switch it into doing the next stitch. Okay, so we're almost at the end of our first round with our purling stitches. Okay. So now we are going oops, we're going to slip our stitch. And this is where our tail comes in so that we can actually pull this up and get this nice and tight here. So now we're going to move our, our uh, yarn to the back of the needle because we're going to knit. And remember, we did our tail here on these, so we need to make sure we take both stitches here when we knit and get both of those stitches on this needle. And again, we can take our tail and we can tighten this up so that we don't have a gap between our, our rounds right here. So if you can see that, there's no gap there. This allows us to tighten that. And it'll loosen again, but that's why we keep this here so that we can have it tighten um, again so that, you know, the second round it'll loosen us again and then we can just tighten it and then it'll be a nice clean um, round and we nobody will know where it began and where it ended so now with the knee with the yarn in the back we're going to knit our row all the way around till we get to um, the end of the round to our stitch marker here and as you can tell here these are our knit ones and remember from our video pearls have the little scarf around the front of them so this is our purl side and this is our knit side. So you technically probably would not have to have a stitch marker because you can tell right there that, you know, your stitches are changed. Um, but it just makes it a reminder when you start working on something. If you're watching TV and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing because you're just doing the same thing all the way around, you might realize that halfway around, you didn't switch because you didn't catch yourself. The stitch marker just makes you think a little bit so that you it's a it's a lot less chance that you'll do the wrong stitch by having to slip the stitch marker. So that's the only reason I suggest using a stitch marker until you know exactly for 100% sure that you're going to catch it. I would use a stitch marker. So just go ahead and knit all the way around till you get back to your stitch marker. And then that will be your round two is a knit row and you're still going to do two more rounds. So you're going to do one more round of purl and one more round of knit before we start decreasing. So go ahead and do those three more rounds and we will come back when we're ready to decrease. Okay, so now that we have our first four rows done on the for the brim of the hat we can start actually working our pattern to do our decreases 
Um, so the decrease is going to start with pearl, and I'm doing um, the small medium. So it's going to be pearl 13 stitches, pearl two together, and then of course we're going to repeat this until we're at the end of our round. So until we're at the end of our stitch marker. We're going to do one round of that, and then we're going to work another three rows, knitting the, whole, the next row, purling the next row, knitting the next row. And we're going to do those decreases until we are down to the last decrease, which equals 90 stitches. And this is nice that it gives you a number of stitches so you know if you've done your decrease correctly. And you should end up with the last stitch is a purl together, and that should be the last stitch that you do just before your stitch marker. Um, but this, it's nice that they give you a, uh, a number so you, that you can keep track of where you are with your stitches and, and keep counting them. So I'll show you how we do our decrease, and then I'll let you work this decrease down until you have the eight, um, till you have your 90 stitches, and then I will show you how to place your stitch marker so that we can go and measure for our hat, and then I will show you doing the hat. So let me show you how we're going to decrease. So we're going to purl 13 stitches, and I already purled my first one just to hold my stitch marker. Okay, let me get some, some thread here, yarn here. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then we're going to take the next two stitches and purl them together. And then we're just going to keep doing that 13 stitches. After we've uh, purled 13, we're going to purl two together. And we're going to do that all the way around so we get back to our stitch marker. And then, since we've purled this row, we're going to just knit the next row around on that. So I will f I will do another one of how showing you how to do that. And then I'll let you do your decreases all the way down. Till you get till we get to the 90 stitches left on our needle and then I will show you how to um, work for the hat so let me keep going one two three four and then we knit these two together or purl these two together okay so we're going to keep doing that all the way around and also I wanted to show you now it's a lot easier uh, everything slides a little bit more the stitches slide a little bit more in your circular needle once you have a couple of rounds on there they um, tend to loosen up and it slides a little bit easier the other thing um, that it will also um, it's harder to get it to twist, so it's easier to know which is the right way and which is the wrong way when you are uh, knitting around. If it tw twists on you, you can actually see it, and so you can put it back. Um, so that's what's nice about it. It's just those first couple of rows that really are a key to getting it to stay the correct way that they don't twist, and then just getting to slide the stitches so that they will slide on the needles. Um, so once you have your decrease done for the brim of your hat, you want to take a stitch marker, a lightweight one, something that's not going to hold weight onto your um, pattern, and you're going to put the stitch marker in 
this stitch here and it's going to go sideways because this stitch is going to um this stitch marker is going to run if i can get it in there in there there we go wanted to be tough with me today this stitch marker is going to stay permanent, not like this one here that will slide around. This one's going to stay right here. This way, when you are done with your hat body, you're able to take your measuring, your tape measure, and put it right on that stitch marker and measure up. That way, you don't have to try to figure out where did it start, stop decreasing, where are you the same size. This just it's a no-brainer just to put that stitch marker on there and then you're able to measure from the exact same spot every time that you do that. So that is how you place a stitch marker once you have decreased and got your um, the brim of your hat done. Now you're going to keep on your number of stitches and you're just going to keep going with those stitches till you get to the length that you need for your hat body and then I will show you how to start decreasing for the top of the hat. So happy knitting. So I wanted to show you still working with the cord hanging out here. Um, you're able to not have that stretch of stitches right there. And once you work up until that stitch where your needle is now free at this point, you can go to the other side over here and you can uh, just bend your hook or your cord and then just as it pulls through just don't pull it right straight through all of your stitches and then you can go on and finish knitting your round and like I said it doesn't pull anything so it's actually pretty easy to do um, the magic loop the stitch using magic loop on circular projects Okay, we're at, we're at the end of our ball of yarn and we need to add on a new ball of yarn. I try not to, which is nice, we're right at the seam, so this will be nice to be able to add on here so it won't stand out so much when we, um, when you go looking at the hat, you won't really notice that you add it on right, right there as opposed to adding it on in the middle. Also, I try not to uh, tie a knot in my yarn just because with this garter stitch it's really hard to hide a knot in this the same with with stocking it it's really hard to hide the knot so it's easier to just knit it in and uh, weave in your ends so we're on a purl row so you're going to put your yarn in and as to purl slip your yarn over there in the loop and then the next oops it went back I want this yarn in front. That's what my little hook is for here. I want this yarn in front here. So now what I end up doing is I take my tail and I leave this tail here. I take my tail and my new yarn and then I we I knit or purl them into the next couple of rows so that my tail end is knitted in and it's it keeps it tight for the tension of that old stitch or that last stitch that you have And just get this on here and get this pulled to the back so it's in the inside and then we can just tighten that down okay and then we can just go on with our row and when I get to the end I'll show you what I do with 
the little tail of the piece that we have hanging here we will end up uh, tying that in over here so that it it will be even on both sides okay so when you get four stitches before your stitch marker take the piece of yarn that you have your tail of the cast on new ball of yarn go in as to purl and take those two together but leave a little bit of slack because you got to knit them into these four stitches and wrap it around your needle and tie it in now when you come up to this one just wrap that around the needle along leave this tail down here along with that and bring it in and do the same oops, with these other ones here Get, get it on your needle there. Oops. And that way you've got your tail tied in. Can you turn that up? And then when you go to the next row here, we're going to knit that, and you can knit that last one and it's nice and tight and they're all tied in there and then you can just finish weaving this end in here and then it's nice and tight and you don't notice it um, when you go now just remember that these first four stitches here have um, double the yarn at each stitch right there so we have to take both of those as one stitch so that we don't increase since we've already decreased enough um, and then just do your magic loop and make your circumference smaller. And then you can just start knitting. And like I said, making sure you take both of those with your stitch. And then what you're going to do with this little tail that you have, you'll just weave that in, that little tail on the inside, you'll weave it in. But then just go around and finish. Now that you've uh, added on another skein of yarn, you can just keep going and doing your knit and purl rows as you've been right along uh, until you get to the desired length that you have. When we get to that length, I will show you um, how to decrease again and then i will probably show you what how to put it on to uh the long double pointed needle so that it is a little bit easier to work with and then when it gets slower than that then we will um transition them on to the short double pointed needles but i will show you that once i get my um circum or my hat to the length that i need then i'll show you how to de to put it on to double pointed needles so knit until you get to your desired length and then I will be right back so now that we have our pattern done to the desired length of the actual top of the hat we're going to start doing a decrease again and it is going to be just like the decrease that we did at the bottom it is in increments of 10 so you're going to decrease down 10 so if you are doing the small medium hat you will have 90 stitches you are going to decrease to 80. once you get to 80 stitches it's going to be really tight when you're using even a magic loop needle because the needles itself in these are so long that it's hard to use even the uh, magic loop so we're going to decrease our stitches by 10 which will give us 80 and then I will show you how to position these stitches onto our double pointed needles so that we can work off of these for the remainder of the hat. So let's decrease. And again, it's knit seven and knit two together. You're just basically where you left off down here you're going to now start that number and decrease at that for by 10 at a time. So I will do the decrease. And then once we get um, down 
get it done, I will show you how to position that onto our um, double pointed needles. And you do the decrease and then you're going to work that number of decreases for three more rounds. And then you'll decrease again, just the same as you did in the beginning when we cast on our hat and decrease to get to this body. Okay, so that's starting the decrease again, how you would do that. Um, I will bring you back when I get it all done and show you how to add and divide for our double pointed needles. Oops. Oh. Okay, so now that we have our um, first decrease and we have 80 stitches, we are now going to, I'm going to show you how to put them onto your double pointed needles. Um, what I would suggest, which makes it easier, since you still need your stitch marker, I would have your stitch marker, I would end up putting my first or my last stitch off of this needle on here, then do my stitch marker, and then we're going to pull this needle through because we're going to be working our stitches off of this needle here onto the double pointed needle and since there is 40 or 80 stitches we're going to put 10 on each or yeah 10 on each no 20 on each needle sorry 20 on each needle so we have the last one off of that and it's just that easy. It's just taking them, sliding them off. Once you get your 20 stitches on your needle, then you would just start a new needle. And this needle is just going to keep getting pulled out. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's one needle. And then just adjust them a little bit and do 20 more on the next one. And just go around till you have all of your stitches on two needles. And like I said, it's just sliding them basically off of one needle onto another. Okay, there's two. And just making sure when you're adjusting that you're not going to slide your needles off, your stitches off. Whoops, like that. If you do, it's not that big of a deal. Just have to knit it back through. Two, 
1920. Okay. Let's get this to shuffle here. Okay, so we know the last row of stitches is going to all go on this last needle here. Um, your double pointed needles come with five um, needles because usually you will work, you'll put four in. Sometimes the projects are small enough that you'll put three in and divide it by three. Like if you're doing a sock, you're not going to usually have four needles in there. You're going to have probably three. Um, but they give you the extra needles so that you can work in the round around on your needles. So that's how it looks after you have your needles on to double pointed. Once you get down close enough and you just slide your needle through, you're going to remember this is where you're starting from, your stitch marker. So your yarn is already over here. So the first thing you're going to do is just slip this stitch onto the needle that you're working and then work the rest of your stitches. You work out of this needle, this will be the needle that you work with next and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this stitch, since we already have our um, yarn in that, we're going to just sew we have to do a, a knit row this time, so we're going to slip that one, and then we're just going to work the stitches off of here. And you just have to, it gets, it's a little cumbersome at first when you are working with double pointed needles because you have the other ends of the needles to, to deal with. You just want to make sure that you don't push too far on your needle because the stitches will slide off the end. There's nothing to stop them from going off of the other end. So you just have to make sure when you are sliding your stitches that you're careful not to slide them too far to get them to be off your needles. And like I could move this one down a little bit so that it's not really in my way, just as long as it's not pushed off the, the needles. Um, you learn to adjust and hold your material different so that the needles are out of your way. I'm having it laying on the table so you guys can see. So it is a little cumbersome right now because the needles are sticking up where they normally wouldn't be if I was holding it down in front of me I would be able to bend it and, and keep the needles out of the way but in order to be able to video I I've, I've got to do it this way okay so we're almost to the end of the first row of stitches that we have and see, we've knitted everything onto the needle that we started with. Now we have this needle. And then we're just going to keep doing, going around and removing the stitches from one needle and putting them on the other. And that's how you knit when you knit with double pointed needles. Okay, so now that you've finished your hat and you're down to your 10 stitches, you're going to cut a tail, probably, you know, the almost the length of your hat there just so that you have a decent tail and then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the big eye and you're going to thread that okay now we are going to since the this is where our stitch is coming from we are going to just slip each one of these stitches onto the needle and it's just basically like slipping them from when you slipped them from your circular needle onto the double pointed needles we're doing the same exact thing and you can pull them in and go to the next needle and slide these ones off Okay. 
Okay, and then our last needle. And slide these ones off. Okay. Now that we have them all off, we're just going to stick our needle in the hole and grab it with our other hand, and we're going to turn our hat inside out. This is where we're going to take this and we're going to pull it tight to close our end, just like that. And then usually I'll go through a couple of the stitches to kind of tie it so that it stays tight um, a couple of different ways. Just so that there's not a um, knot on the top of the hat. And then just want to make sure that it didn't affect the other side at all when you did that. And then you're just going to weave this end in like you've been weaving them in. And you are done with your bucket hat. It turned out cute. Those are a cute little hat. You can take your little marker off here. And there we go. Well, that turned out really cute. Well, everybody, thanks for watching the video on how to make a bucket hat. This hat, actually, my niece asked me to make, and so I figured while I was making the hat, I might as well film to make this hat. I hope she really enjoys it. Um, if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. It does benefit me by you subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, hit the thumbs up and the notification button down below. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'm willing to answer anything that you guys ask. And as always, I will catch you on the next one. Have a good day. Bye.